Hey there everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks again for watching. I'm gonna do a quick video here on the differences between 700R4, 4L60E uh, pump kits. So here we have a combination of rotor slide for a seven vein, a 10 vein, and a 13 vein pump. So tell them the difference between the rotors is self-explanatory. Obviously the number of slots for veins indicates what kind of rotor you have. So seven vein obviously has seven slots and 10 and 13 and so forth. But what may not be as obvious to the eye is the differences in the slides. So I'll cover that real quick and then I'll discuss interchangeability um, between these three different um, rotor slide combinations. So here we have a seven vein slide. Uh, these were installed in all 700 R4s between 1982 and uh, 1986. And then uh, they moved to a 10 vein uh, rotor slide combination, I believe in 1987 um, or 1988. Uh, I'm not 100% sure uh, what year that was, so I'll annotate once I um, you know, determine it to be whatever that is uh, to be accurate. Then, in either 1996 or 1997, they uh, moved to a 13-vein slide for the 4L60Es, and uh, the change was primarily to increase fluid pressures um, at wide open throttle. So, with the 10 veins, you have a little bit more volume. With the 13 veins, you have a little bit more pressure. And the 13 vein pumps uh, were also intended to be a little quieter than the 10 veins. So, um, when you're driving around in a vehicle, you know, car, truck, SUV, I don't, you know, you're not going to notice a difference. I mean, maybe you might, but it's highly unlikely. It's, it's going to be like, you know, something that's going to jump out at you. But uh, those were the reasons that GM made the changes that they did. So uh, let me talk a little bit about how you could tell these two. Um, or, so let me talk about how you can tell these three slides apart especially if you need either a used rotor or a good use slide for your pump assembly and you're not sure um, you know which slide if you're like at a parts store or maybe at a junkyard or whatever and um, a parts bin and this is all you see then this way you could tell the difference so if we're looking at the seven vein uh, slide here notice here and I'm gonna have all these slides with the uh, spring stop at the three o'clock position and you'll notice here I have a little dot in this area of the slide, it is a, a given thickness. So, take our calipers, and this is a crude way of doing it. You really want to do this with a micrometer, but I mean, it's close enough for our purposes. Okay, so here's the thickness. Looks like it's 340 thousandths thick in that location. And you'll notice the 10 vein, by eye, it's noticeably thicker. So in the same area, you know, we're going to measure where the dot is. You notice it's 438,000, 437,000, somewhere in there. So by eye, it's noticeably thicker. And of course, you know, we measured and we determined it to be thicker. Um, you know, measurably. And for our 13 vein, uh, this is going to come in at um, 410 thousandths thick, 420 thousandths thick, somewhere in there. So it's easy to tell the 7 vein slide apart from the 10 and the 13 vein. Okay, you can just look in this area here at the nine o'clock position with uh, the spring stop at the three o'clock position. And I mean, just by eye, you can tell that it's noticeably thinner if you're looking at a whole bunch of slides from all various years. Um, the one thing that is relatively common between uh, the 10 and the 13 vein uh, slides are these porting slots right here. So you'll notice the porting slots on the 10 vein and the seven vein are gonna be largely the same length. Okay, they're the same length. I mean, I guess I can get out like a protractor and confirm that they're exactly the same length, but by eye, they're gonna be very similar to almost be indistinguishable if they are in fact different. Contrast that with the 13 vein slide and you'll notice the porting slots are much longer. 
as you see along here and the portion where uh, there is free of porting uh, slot you know slot cut out is much smaller on the 13 vein slide at the six o'clock position than it is on the 10 vein slide so here's a 10 vein slide you notice um, the area um, without any slots is much larger than that of the 13 vein okay um, those are the visual differences. We turn them upside down. There's no major difference in terms of where uh, the relief cut or the pocket is for your support O-ring and your O-ring cover. Um, that's all the same. Uh, same goes for the location for your little Teflon um, bumper spring and uh, you know square spring back or whatever you want to call it or you know. Um, you know, I'll, I'll annotate whatever the correct terminology is, but point is, is that for the most part, these slides are all identical. Uh, you have a little bit thinner webbing here at the nine o'clock position and at the three o'clock position on the seven vein compared to the 10 and the 13 vein. On the 10 vein and the seven vein, the porting slots are for the most part the same length. However, they're much longer on the 13 vein slide than they are on the previous two. Okay, rotors, no different in terms of how they're configured in, you know, on the back side, other than the fact that they differ in the number of slots. Okay, um, they all use rotor guides that are, you know, um, designed specifically for uh, whichever rotor they go to. All right, now let's talk about interchangeability. So you can interchange a 13 vein kit, which means a rotor and a slide, um, and retro it back to a 4L60E or 700R4 pump housing that originally took a 10 vein or even a seven vein um, rotor slide. Okay, uh, you know, there's some benefits to doing that, especially for the seven vein. Um, the benefits to me aren't as clear or as obvious when um, going from a 10 vein to a 13 vein, retroing a 13 vein kit into a 10 vein pump. Um, you know, it's usually not necessary or not worth the extra added expense of purchasing a, an additional pump kit and then having the pump housing, you know, machine to that when, uh, you know, assuming the 10 vein rotor slide combo is fine, over the majority of the time you don't need to do it. Um, as far as the seven veins, uh, these rotors are physically the strongest type of rotor you can run. Um, the more slots you cut into the rotor, obviously, the weaker it is in proportion. But these rotors, all three of them, generally speaking, will hold up to a lot of RPM. The main thing you want to make sure is that you keep faithful to your clearances that you meet your rotor to pump body deck surface and your slide to pump body deck surface clearance no matter what combination of rotor and slide you're using okay so you can take a 13 vein rotor and you can stick it in a 10 vein slide in a pump that took originally a 10 vein rotor slide and it'll work fine okay and vice versa and same with the seven vein Again, there's no um, material uh, adverse impact to swapping rotors amongst slides or entire service packs and retroing back to previous applications or prospectively installing 10 vein rotor slide combos into pumps that took 13 veins. Although again, that's where you say that why do it, right? There's no real reason to do it other than if you're in some kind of jam and you know this, let's just say, I don't know, broke but by some miracle, the working surfaces are perfectly fine, which is very, 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 very unlikely to be the case. And this is all you had laying around, then I guess you could do it. But I mean, again, that's a very, very, um, you know, oddball scenario that where the probability of that being the case is near zero. But um, you can also purchase billet rotors. Uh, billet rotors 
are, I guess, somewhat controversial. I mean, I hear accounts of them actually breaking and being more prone to failure than the factory um, rotors, but uh, I've used billet rotors in various high uh, horsepower, high RPM race applications, and I mean, one has yet to come back to me for failure, so I don't know. Um, you know, it's kind of a judgment call on your part as far as if you want to upgrade the rotor from the factory to the billet. The main thing is clearance. So for your rotor, you want to be between one and one and a half thousandths clearance between the top of the rotor here and the deck surface for the pump body. And the slide gets one to two thou clearance um, top of the slide to uh, the deck surface. And you measure it just like you see these um, rotor slide combos here. In other words, no support O-ring, no cover, just stick it in there. Um, just like this and then do your measurements with a straight edge. I have a separate video that shows you how to do that so if you're interested you can check that out. I think it's like 700R4 4L60E uh, measuring clearance for your pumps or something to that effect. But anyway um, that's a quick video. Uh, wanted to cover that because you know every once in a while I get questions about this and sometimes I have questions of my own so you know I'm doing a course of research this is what I found as it relates to both fitment and interchangeability as well as telling them apart. So anyway, um, if you have any questions, comments for me, go ahead and leave them below. If there's anything else you want me to cover in more detail, also uh, feel free to post what that is and I'll do a separate video on it. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your viewership and your time. Have a great rest of your day or evening and we'll see you on the next video.